Welcome back. So, uh, I'm in Sydney at the moment. I don't often do these kind of travel-y type vlogs because, I mean, opportunities don't really come around all that often, but, uh, so I'm in Sydney for just the next 24 hours. It's gonna be a pretty whirlwind kind of trip. And the reason that I'm here is that IBM reached out to me and said, would you like to come and be a guest in uh, for our Cloud Innovation Exchange, which is, uh, which is happening here in Darling Harbour in Sydney. And, uh, and basically what's going on with this exchange, it is a collection of, uh, of presentations, talks, and uh, workshops in and around some of the most sort of leading edge innovative solutions when it comes to a uh, hybrid cloud, data setups, and, and artificial intelligence. And, uh, and now obviously for me, as like a, as a consumer facing kind of, you know, open source enthusiast kind of channel, um, it is fascinating to me, first of all, the whole world of, uh, of cloud computing, just in the first instance, because, you know, I don't know if many of you know, but I'm not a developer, I'm just somebody who enjoys, I guess, the benefits of a lot of open source projects. And, uh, and anyway, so the interesting thing for me is that obviously IBM had probably one of the biggest, uh, I think it's the second biggest, technological uh, merger or purchase in uh, in recent history and that was their acquisition of Red Hat uh, which is an open source Linux based kind of company. Now the quest for this next 24 hours is going to be about, uh, for me anyway, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of impact has that acquisition or is that acquisition going to make for IBM as a company and what they're doing in the world of cloud computing. So basically the big news behind the, the Red Hat acquisition with IBM is that first of all, Red Hat will continue to operate as, as, its, own, uh, as its own company with its own uh, goals, with its own leadership. Now, the interesting thing here is that from IBM's point of view, Red Hat is critical to one element that they wanna be able to bring to the hybrid cloud computing space. Now, basically what this means, as much as I can distill it down, because again, I'm running off a very shallow understanding as is, is that when it comes to public cloud computing, IBM know that they have missed the boat on that one completely. So what they are trying to target now, in addition to public and private cloud offerings, is being able to give a specific set of tools and a set of frameworks that can run on any kind of cloud provider or operator and be the most efficient and be the most secure and streamlined solution uh, for if you're trying to deploy a particular workload on uh, any kind of cloud computing. But my hope is, is that at the end of this video, my search for the significance of this acquisition uh, will hopefully generate a bit of interest for you guys as to uh, what kind of stuff IBM has out there now that they have acquired Red Hat. And uh, there's a lot more going on than just that at this exchange. But I've got a very limited amount of time. So let's see what we can find on the floor tomorrow. And uh, we'll see where it gets us. Enterprises have somewhere between 3,000 and 5,000 apps, mostly siloed in different environments. With a hybrid multi-cloud approach, you can migrate and modernize those applications to create enterprise value, deliver better customer experiences, and improve developer productivity by 80% when you start to think about technologies like Red Hat OpenShift and Kubernetes and containerization. You can't get locked in. You've got to embrace open source, which we've been talking about, where you can build an application once and you can run it anywhere in an open, secure platform. So, I would guess it's no surprise to you that uh, here at IBM, we have chosen to major on hybrid multi-cloud environments and make a significant investment around the space for all of our global clients. Together with Red Hat, 
we are putting together a platform that runs across private, public, and dedicated clouds on an open, leading, uh, I'm sorry, a leading open source software infrastructure. It's game changing. It doesn't tell you you have to move off your current investments. It allows you to move from your current investments into the new infrastructure world that we believe will be extensible for you and give you competitive advantage. Boy, oh boy, do we have some stuff to talk about. So, back from Sydney, at the top of this video I talked about how much impact does the acquisition of Red Hat have on IBM as a company, present and future. Well, a few thoughts around this. So my mind has kind of been blown on this topic and I've had to learn a fair bit and I certainly don't know everything, but I've had to learn a fair bit with regards to cloud computing and uh, developing applications for the cloud and, uh, and what all that means in, in the enterprise space. Big differentiator here that I wanna make. First of all, I realize that most of the content that I have done has always been user facing, uh, very sort of end user, what you as just an average Joe working on a computer would be interested in when it comes to open source and Linux. Now, what I knew and was fully aware of is that Linux is, is uh, I mean, it's viable more or less as a desktop, but it is a freaking powerhouse when it comes to uh, what Linux and open source technologies and tools can be on the enterprise side of things. And that's a big deal as the world continues to move forward and the way that companies think about how they manage their IT solutions, their data centers, artificial intelligence, all of this stuff, is, uh, is, you know, the ground is shifting very quickly underneath the industry's feet. And Linux and open source technology, uh, specifically that is being provided through Red Hat, is one of the key pillars for what IBM sees as its priorities uh, in being able to enable companies to shift their stuff to, or to be able to host and manage and deploy stuff in hybrid cloud scenarios uh, moving forward. This is a huge deal and there's like way too much detail for me to go into, but basically my key takeaway from this trip and uh, the thing that I was most curious going in was like, just how much does this mean? $34 billion for an acquisition of a company is no joke. And a key quote that kind of stood out to me um, that, this, that this CEO uh, mentioned was that uh, Linux containerization and Kubernetes is basically gonna be the standard, uh, the gold standard for, uh, for chapter two of cloud computing, which is this idea that being able to basically use whatever solution that you need to, uh, to get the job done rather than being siloed in a one particular cloud provider or one particular cloud setup uh, and moving the bulk of the work that is done behind the scenes into these hybrid cloud setups. So that's already way too much detail than you need to know. But basically, yes, Red Hat is a huge deal to IBM. Another key quote that, uh, or another key idea that was raised during the keynote summit was this idea of trust. And this is interesting for me. And the way that IBM sees it is that trust is gonna be a very key thing moving forward in this space, which is why they see embracing open source and embracing standards that open source companies like Red Hat have created are, are key to them moving forward. So honestly, there was a lot of crazy stuff that was on show at this summit, as you would expect. Uh, there was lots of different utilizations of, of data and of artificial intelligence and of basically every buzzword that you've ever heard of in the last 12 months was, was present in some form or other at, uh, on, the, on the expo floor. Now, speaking of AI, I also managed to play around with and had a great conversation with, uh, with an IBM developer advocate who does some really interesting stuff utilizing the, the IBM Watson artificial intelligence uh, framework and then bring that to like a grassroots level uh, bot that can be uh, programmed educational purposes and all that kind of thing, providing people with a bit of a foot in the door for, uh, for being able to program an artificial intelligence, uh, almost like a digital assistant in a lot of ways. Okay, um, so what we could do is if you wanna like um, introduce yourself and like basically what we've got going on here. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then we can just have a bit of a conversation about it. Wherever it goes, it goes. And then I'm just gonna use this as just like a little segment in sort of a bigger video about what's sure. going on here. So um, my name's Calvin. Uh, I'm a developer advocate at IBM Australia. And um, at CIE, I've been demoing the TJBot 
which is an open source project um, that has been designed and developed by IBM uh, to help people learn more about digital assistants and AI. So yeah. you, you look at um, other digital assistants, you say something like play something on Spotify, um, and you know it just like goes somewhere and it just works, but you don't actually understand how how that what, what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah, for sure. So so for this, um, what uh, you want to do is you actually create your digital assistant from scratch. Mm -hmm. So you define your entities, you define your intents and your dialogue flows so that you know when you say play um, something from Spotify that Spotify is an entity, mm. um, playing something is like play music is the intent, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. So what we have going on here is a very simple conversation demo. Um, which kind of highlights the basic capabilities of the TJ bot. So like the, the robot itself, you can actually download the files and create on your own. Um, and you can take things from around the house and actually build it uh, for free, technically. Mm -hmm. um, or you can, you can buy a kit and they're about, um, I think $300. Mm -hmm. The services that we're using, um, I'm actually using a free um, cloud account right now. It's a 30-day trial mm -hmm. um, just to show what we can do with the free services that are available. Yeah, cool. Um, right now you can see there's a whole bunch of text and that's because he's actually been listening to everything that we say mm -hmm. um, and then turning it into um, from from voice into into text. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to give it a shot you can you can try and say uh, like uh, ask him to introduce himself. Um, his, his trigger word is Watson. Mm -hmm. Watson. Introduce yourself. Let me think. Hi, my name is TJ Bot. Yeah. There it is. But I think where the power really lies is the way that you can integrate it with other APIs, um, both IBM and external. I know someone who has set something up so that every time they push a commit to Git, um, to their GitHub account, they it like dispenses candy. Um, as like a reward, oh, <laughs> which I, which is it's cool. It's uh it's fun and it's harmless. Um, yep. uh, and that's the idea because it's it's better to practice these skills mm. on like low risk yeah, projects sure. yep. than start right away trying to save the world. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, like I said, it's all free to play around with. There's yeah. plenty of documentation, tutorials. Um, you can Hi, even reach Blake. out to local Pleasure IBM to developer advocates. Mm -hmm. um, they're always keen to help and uh, you know work on projects with you if you want to learn more. Yeah. Awesome. That's it. Yeah, nice. So good. Well, thank you, TJ Bot. Thank you, yeah. Calvin. Make sure to follow at Calvin this on Twitter to learn more about his cool project. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. All right. Good stuff. Much sure. Thanks. Appreciate it. No worries. Um, I'd love to pass the question off to you guys. When it comes to the, the influence, technologically speaking, there was a huge shift that happened when containerized uh, applications became a thing. When Docker made it easy, Kubernetes made it manageable, and a, and a platform like Red Hat's OpenShift is making it uh, very manageable across a bunch of different cloud providers. This kind of stuff is massive for what companies can scale and, uh, and do with, uh, with open source technology. So I pass the question off to you guys in that, what, what do you see as, as being some of the, the positive ripple effects of this in the consumer Linux space? Because I guess at the end of the day, we all want to see desktop Linux do well in some form or other. And when I think about distributions like Fedora that are usually kind of the test bed of a lot of the tech that is going to be powering, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, um, you can kind of see the connection there in terms of the runoff of a company like Red Hat backing uh, that project and wanting to see that project succeed for financial reasons. Uh, but the ripple effects of that means that there are more developers who are being paid to work and polish and push these platforms even further forward. So, uh, so what do you see as some of the positive runoff effects of this? Red Hat, definitely a big deal to IBM. And uh, I reckon that's where we'll leave it for today. We'll see if we can get uh, somebody on the channel to... Uh, to kind of unpack it a little bit further and we'll see where else we could take this conversation. But thank you so much for watching and sticking with me all this way. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you guys in the, in the next episode. We've still got another part to the Ubuntu review that's yet to come 
and, uh, and we're going to continue in the using Pop OS series as well. So thank you so much for watching. Peace. See you in the next one.